Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to try and unravel the mystery of Michael Atter's Attry, the chap of chaps. Just the memory of the old father. He died a little while ago. Is that your dad? Well, it's his arrows he nabbed off a, off a mile mile when he was in Africa. You see, Atter's is a professional chap. Only the best is good enough. So there are certain things I cannot stand for. And that is people pretending to be a chap and all the rest of it, and they don't iron their shirts, and you just see all this sort of slop everywhere. That, that, that is irritating. Ah. Ah. But certainly, I'd say uh, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a chap, really. So, uh, yeah, it's a chap's house. Although I'd rather like it when it's uh, Philly's house, to be honest, you know. <laughs> oh. mm. oh. Now, a fine set of whiskers is, of course, de rigueur for a chap. Keep your, keep it, keep the tapery absolutely precise, in tip-top shape, definitely. We've got this rather good guy. I've seen in better days, haven't we? Oh, that, that, what is that? That's a moustache snood. Very important. Does it get, is it easy to put on? Or? This is seen. This it's a bit scabby. It's well, no, we we won't use that word. But it, it it's quite terrifying. One looks a little bit like Hannibal, Hannibal Lecter, apparently. Especially with the elastic band, it pulls the ears out. So you can imagine, you know, giving a lady a goodnight kiss and this thing, it certainly calls their Billy Arnie or so. But, um... Um, but Atters has a surprising interest in the other side. Ah, now this is very important, actually. Another, another string to my bow is the paranormal research. Often he puts on shows, Atters at trees, chapelgasmic terrors. The Homo Magneticus, ladies and gentlemen. Really, got an insight into my various case studies, where I've researched into various subjects such as spontaneous human combustion. Um, it's a classic case, really, where one can see certain aspects of the human being remain intact, <laughs> despite the high temperatures reaching higher than the core of the sun. Now, next case study. <laughs> my my father, my grandfather, they used to belong to various strange groups and. Uh, Certainly, they've, they've, we've, I've been brought up in uh, an environment of, of, of the paranormal, uh, and, uh, and I've certainly experienced uh, a few, few things, really have. Reading there. But um, after, after a while, I did feel rather peculiar, I have to say. I felt, I felt a manifestation of Mildred Roper entering my being, and uh, I noticed just these two teeth-like structures <laughs> on her chin, here and here. Now, after a while, I sensed a slight feeling. I sensed there was something going on with my chin, as you can see. <laughs> Just who is at us? Well, I'm afraid we have come to the end of my lecture, ladies and gentlemen. I, I certainly couldn't work in an office nine to five. I'd be swinging from a rope. I, I don't think I'd cope with that one. So I have to, uh, you know, vent myself in, in various ways, and uh, I think taking the Mickey out of many things in a in a in a self effacive rather chappish way it keeps me going.
though I think one of the, the most popular events that happen are, are, are the well, it's the annual uh, Chap Olympics. Well, in fact, I quite often have won the uh, Bounders Award there. To win the, the coveted Golden Bowler, one has to um, be struck by a filly, and uh, I actually uh, managed to get multiple punches.